Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Namaste all. So welcome back in this lecture series on evolutionary game theory. I am Dr. Gopal, assistant professor from Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, IIT Dharwad, Karnataka in India. So in this lecture series, we have been discussing different aspects of evolutionary game theory. In previous lecture, we saw how to calculate uh, the evolutionary stable strategy that is in short we call ESS in hog tub game and another game we saw the same thing in that is called the beetle game. So let us go back to the hog dub game what was happening there we <coughs> saw that with each player there were two options two strategies that each player has one was uh, whether to show hawkish behavior or to show dovish behavior and we saw in our analysis that neither hawk nor dove is an ESS. So, our job still remains that we, we are not still able to find out what is the ESS in this game called Hawk and Dove game. So, let us move further to find out what is ESS in that game. So, we saw in this Hawk Dove game, we found out that neither Hawk nor Dove is an ESS. Okay. So, for our reference, we should have the game matrix. So, I will draw it again here. So, we were having two players as we are considering the pairwise contest in this population. So, we started with some population, okay. then two players were randomly matched to play this game called Hawk and Dove. Okay. So, this is stack deer 2, this is stack deer 1, both of them has two strategies, strategies Hawk and Dove. Okay. So, if you remember the payoff in this matrix, so this Hawk and Hawk when they interact both get b minus c divided by 2, b minus c divided by 2. When a hawk interacts with dove, if you remember this is v comma 0, here is opposite is there, dove gets 0, hawk gets v and here when two doves interact, this is b by 2 comma b by 2. So, this is our game matrix and in this game matrix we saw that neither hawk nor dove is an ESS. So, what we will do, we will now try to find out what else can be an option for ESS in this game. So, if you remember from our lectures uh, from this game theory we did in the beginning that in certain cases we see that players randomize when they are not able to play the pure strategies they randomize and in such cases we found out something called mixed strategy. Nash equilibrium. Okay. And what happens in this mixed strategy Nash equilibrium? Players randomize over pure strategies. Okay. So, we will try to do something similar in this case as we did not get the ESS till now. So, we will see whether some uh, randomization over these pure strategies whether it is an ESS or not in this game. Okay. So, what we will assume we will assume that we will call this as mixed strategy mixed strategy ESS. So, let us consider that this the mixed study that we are talking about 
in this game is such that that a deer a stag deer is randomizing and choosing the strategy hawk with probability p and we know that the p lies between 0 and 1 with this probability p a stag deer chooses hawk and rest of the time that is with probability 1 minus p it chooses dove okay so this is how we define this mixed strategy equilibrium in another words what we can say that in p fractions of that's how we define this randomization in p fractions of its encounters with another deer another deer it plays hawk and in remaining times or remaining times it plays dove ok. So, our, our job remains, our job is to find the value of p, probability p p if the members of this population members of this population are randomizing with randomizing over hawk and dove and choosing hawk with probability p then this population is immune to any mutation with some other strategy with some other strategy ok. So, the idea is we want to find out the p which is evolutionarily stable or ESS ok and that is the definition of the ESS that we already know that if all the members of any population are following or using that strategy and that strategy strategy is immune uh, from all mutations with some other strategy then we call that strategy is ESS. So, our job is to find out P that is ESS. So, let us move towards this what we will do we will again draw here the game matrix for our reference. So, this was hawk, this was dove, hawk and dove, this is b minus c by 2, b minus c by 2, this was b comma 0, 0 comma b, b by 2, 
comma b by 2. So, to in order to find out this uh, evolutionary stable strategy in mix, mixed strategy, what we will do? We will consider that all members are having P as their strategy. So, I, I am again telling what P is when we when I say P is as their strategy that means that player is choosing hawk in P fractions of its encounters and in rest 1 minus P fractions of it, it, its encounters he is using dove ok. So, this is what we mean by P having as uh, one's strategy ok fine ok. So, we will write fitness as it is a pair wise contest where two members of this population are ran randomly matched to play with each other. So, what I will do I will write the fitness in a case fitness of a player when a player with P prime you know strategy interacting with another player with P double prime you know strategy. So, what does that mean? So, player 1 for example say he is playing hawk with probability P prime ok and player 2 is playing hawk with probability p double prime ok. So, I am writing expected payoff of this player who is playing with probability p prime ok in this interaction. So, for that let us see. So, player 1 is playing this hawk with probability p prime ok and this dove with probability 1 minus p prime ok. Similarly, this player 2 or dr 2 is playing hawk with probability p double prime and dove with probability 1 minus p double prime ok. So, let us see I am writing this payoff. So, I am writing p prime into p double prime multiplied by. So, you see p prime this hawk p double prime this hawk. So, we are in this smaller box ok. So, the payoff is here b minus c divided by 2. So, with this probability p prime multiplied by p double prime the player is getting this payoff or this fitness level. So, we will multiply this uh, this uh, probability with this expected fitness that player is getting from here b minus c divided by 2. Similarly, what is the probability of being in this cell? This is p dash p, uh, p prime multiplied by 1 minus p double prime. So, we can write plus p prime multiplied by 1 minus p double prime and what a dr is getting from here b. So, multiplied by v plus this box this is 1 minus p prime multiplied by p double prime. So, 1 minus p prime multiplied by p double prime and the payoff here is 0 ok. In the last last box this this is 1 minus p double p prime multiplied by 1 minus p double prime. So, 1 minus p prime 1 minus p double prime payoff is b by 2 payoff is b by 2. So, this is how we can write the fitness of any general interaction between two general players with probability p prime and p double prime or with the strategy p prime p double prime. So, having written this what we will do we will now find out the mixed strategy ESS in this interaction. So, we will consider a population with all deers playing strategy P ok. We start from here as in every case as you know. Now, what happens at this stage a mutation with a mutation with another strategy q 
occurs in this population at a level of epsilon. So, we know what is the meaning of level of epsilon that means that epsilon fraction is there of the mutant with strategy Q and burn minus epsilon is the fraction of the original population with the strategy P. So, I can write the new composition new mix of the population is 1 minus epsilon is the fraction of strategy P and epsilon is the fraction of strategy Q. Okay. So, what I will write now and we know that both of these P and Q both are lying between 0 and 1 as we already know about the probability. Okay. So, I will write in as in the other cases we did so in the same manner we will I will write the expected payoff or better to say expected fitness of strategy P in this interaction. Okay. So, basically again we are considering uh, a, pair, a pairwise contest or pairwise interaction in this population. So, randomly we are choosing two players and matching them with each other uh, uh, to play this game. Okay. So, what will happen in all as we did in all other cases? So, I am writing the fitness of strategy P. So, that will be equal to I am writing pay attention 1 minus epsilon multiplied by F P comma P plus epsilon multiplied by F P comma Q. Okay. So, basically as we did in other cases also. So, when player with strategy P is, is matched with another player then what can happen? It can be matched with uh, another player with the strategy P. Okay. That will happen with probability 1 minus epsilon. Okay. This is the probability that strategy P meets another P. Okay. Now, you should understand this because we have been doing this in you know at least last one or two lectures. Okay. Similarly, this is the probability that P is meeting a Q. Okay. So, 1 minus epsilon the probability that P is meeting another P multiplied by fitness in such an interaction that is fitness when p is playing with p okay plus epsilon that is the probability that p is meeting a q multiplied by this fitness when p plays with q this is what we have done so this is the expected fitness of strategy p we will call this as equation number 1 okay similarly what we can do we can write fitness of strategy Q. This is fitness of strategy Q. Okay. Again in the same manner we can write this. This is 1 minus epsilon. This is the probability with which a Q meets P. So, we will write F Q comma P. Q is meeting with P. Okay. Plus epsilon. This is the probability with which Q meets another Q epsilon multiplied by F Q comma Q. Let us say this is equation number 2. Okay. And we know from our definition of ESS that for the population with strategy P. To 
सर्वाइव द म्यूटेंट स्ट्रेटजी क्यू वॉट शुड बी द केस द एफ पी दैट बी रोट इन इक्वेशन नंबर वन शुड बी ग्रेटर देन एफ क्यू ओके सो वॉट शुड बी द केस दिस वन माइनस एप्सलॉन आई एम राइटिंग फ्रॉम इक्वेशन नंबर वन वन माइनस एप्सलॉन मल्टीप्लाइड बाई एफ पी कॉमा पी प्लस एप्सलॉन मल्टीप्लाइड बाई एफ पी कॉमा क्यू शुड बी ग्रेटर देन द क्वांटिटी इन इक्वेशन नंबर टू दैट इज वन माइनस एप्सलॉन मल्टीप्लाइड बाई एफ क्यू कॉमा पी ओके प्लस एप्सलॉन मल्टीप्लाइड बाई एफ क्यू कॉमा क्यू ओके so this is the condition for our uh, let's call this equation number 3 this is the condition for t to be an ess okay if say what happens if we say that our epsilon is very small as epsilon is tending to zero what will happen then we can pay attention to this equation let's say for the left hand side if epsilon is tending to zero then epsilon but minus epsilon is tending towards one okay and this whole term this is tending towards zero same is true for right hand side this is tending towards one as epsilon is very small so this whole term is tending towards f q comma p similarly this whole thing as epsilon is approaching zero this whole thing is also approaching zero okay so if we take this limiting condition when epsilon is very small and tending to zero we can get another condition as as i told you uh, about these terms so the new condition will be f considering this condition of epsilon being very small p comma p should be greater than f q comma p okay okay so this is our condition for p to be an ess okay so if we want that to check whether p is an ess or uh, ess or not in this game then if this condition is satis satisfied then we can say that p is an ess okay as p we have taken epsilon very small then we are getting this condition say this is equation number 4 from equation 3 only so equation 3 or better to say condition 3 condition 3 and 4 both are satisfied satisfied for small epsilon okay so what is the what it means when i say that p is an ess that means that if a population if a population is having p a strategy that is this is a mixed strategy that is it's choosing hawk with probability p in our original case although this condition is general it is not for uh, any particular game like hawk and dove this is true for any game but in our case of our you know game so if choosing hawk with probability p okay then it can survive
एली म्यूटेशन ओके विद अनदर स्ट्रेटेजी ओके सो आई विल राइट अगेन द कंडीशन थ्री एज इट वॉज ऑन द लास्ट पेज सो कंडीशन थ्री वॉज वॉट बी हैड वन माइनस एप्सिलॉन टू एफ पी कॉम ए पी प्लस एप्सिलॉन मल्टीप्लाइड बाई एफ पी कॉम ए क्यू इज ग्रेटर देन वन माइनस एप्सिलॉन एफ क्यू कॉम ए पी प्लस एप्सिलॉन मल्टीप्लाइड बाई एफ q comma q okay so when we put the condition on epsilon that epsilon is so small that it is tending towards zero then we got this condition 4 from this condition 3 so this is condition 3 and when we put the limitation of epsilon become becoming uh, very near to zero tending to zero then we get condition 4 so For a small, very small epsilon, both of these conditions are satisfied. Okay, so we now we got a handy, you know, condition for getting to know whether P is an mixed strategy P is an ESS or not. Okay, pay a little more attention. Suppose, say, F P comma P is equal to F Q comma P. okay so what is happening strategy p is doing as good against p as strategy q is doing okay so what will happen if this is the case so what is happening pay attention that fitness label that a player is getting with strategy p against p same fitness label the mutated strategy q is getting against original strategy p okay so if we if we pay attention if this is the case then what will happen in this equation number 3 or condition 3 both of these terms these will cancel out okay and then we want to see whether p is an ess or not then what will be the condition the condition becomes epsilon multiplied by f p comma q should be greater than epsilon multiplied by f q comma q that means f p comma q should be greater than f q comma q okay so when this condition is there that means mutant strategy is as good as the original strategy against the original strategy p then this is the condition for p to become ess what does that mean this means if this is true then original strategy p should do better against mutant strategy q as better than what q is doing against its, itself okay so fitness level of p against q should be greater than fitness level of q against itself then we say that p is an ess so basically when this condition is satisfied this we call as strict ess and this we call as mild ess okay so this is how or for this strict we call it strong ess sorry so this is the condition for strong ess this is the condition for mild ess okay so now we got our handy definition for mixed strategy ess okay so basically when i am writing the equation condition number 4 only which is coming for very small epsilon f p comma p is greater than f q comma p okay then p is an ess 
this is strong ESS. Okay, when both of these are equal, F P comma P equal to F Q comma P. That means again I am telling that the mutant strategy Q is as good against P as P is against P. Okay. Then what will happen? Then we have to check the next term that is this term and this term as both of these term cancel out. Okay. So then for P to become ESS, what should be the condition? Condition is F P comma Q, P should be better against the mutant strategy compared to how Q is against itself. Okay. Then we call it as mild strategy. Okay. So, these are our definition for ESS, sorry this is not mild strategy, this is mild ESS. Okay. So, now we have got the definition of ESS, so what we will do, we will try to find out the ESS in our original game, uh, Hawk and Dove game. So, that, that was our objective to find out. ESS in our original game. So, I will again draw the game matrix. So, please pay attention what we did till now. So, this is the general condition, this is general conditions for ESS, mixed strategy ESS P. Okay. So, you can apply these conditions to any game. So, we were driving what is the condition for P to be an ESS. Okay. So, now you can apply this to any game. So, what we will do? We will now apply it to our original game. We had a job in our hand that we wanted to find out the ESS for the game Hawk and Dove that we were analyzing. So, we will do that job. So, our this game matrix I will again draw for our reference. This was Hawk, this was Dove, this is DR2, this is DR1, Hawk. Dove B minus C divided by 2, B minus C divided by 2, this is V comma 0, 0 comma B, B by 2 comma B by 2. This was our game. Okay. So, what was the condition? We just found out for strong ESS, for P to be strong ESS what should be the condition f p comma p should be greater than f q comma p okay and this should be true for all not equal to p so in previous uh, slides also this should be true for for all q not equal to p sorry I forgot to write. So, this is for all q not equal to p, this is also for all q not equal to p. Okay. So, whenever, whenever we are writing this condition, this is for all q not equal to p. Okay. Fine. So, if this condition is fulfilled, then we can say that P is, uh, we already know that with this condition P is an ESS okay? and with this help of this game matrix for Hawk and Dove game, we will find out the value of P, what is the value of the probability with which if the population chooses Hawk, then that population becomes immune to all invasions of the mutant. So, this is the objective, we have to find out such value of P that is the ESS in this game, mixed strategy ESS with which if this population chooses Hawk with that probability P, you will find out the value of probability P, then this population becomes immune to all invasions. Okay. Okay. So, let us see. So, what we will do, we will consider that this is say, this person is choosing player 1 is choosing Hawk with probability P, W is 1 minus P okay. and then this player 2 is choosing hawk with 
probability q this is 1 minus q and as in all cases we started we start with the population okay with all players playing p okay then it is mutated with epsilon fraction of mutants with strategy q okay and we have already written if you uh, remember in the context of this game hawk and dove we have already written the fitness when a player with p prime and p double prime play e with each other then what is the fitness level of player playing p prime this we have already written so what we will do we will plug in this f p prime and p double prime expression considering p prime equal to p and p double prime equal to q we will put that because we are considering now that there is a population with the strategy p and the mutant epsilon fraction with the strategy q is entering to this okay so we will replace p prime with p and p double prime with q and put this expression in this condition okay this condition and we'll try to find out whether p is an ess or not okay so if we put that expression in this condition then what happens we get p square multiplied by b minus c divided by 2 plus p into 1 minus p so remember that we are replacing p prime with p and p double prime with q in that equation of fitness okay then putting that fitness at these places plugging in the values for these okay into v plus 1 minus p into p into 0 plus 1 minus p square into b by 2 this is the left hand side and that should this should be greater than the right hand side i am writing this is p into q multiplied by b minus c divided by 2 okay plus q 1 minus p multiplied by b plus 1 minus q multiplied by p into 0 plus 1 minus p 1 minus q into b by 2. So, this is our condition this condition we have put the value of f p comma p and f q comma p with the help of again pay attention with this equation okay considering p prime equal to p and p double prime equal to q then we get this condition for ess for our hawk and dove game okay so if we simplify this and this should be true this condition should be true for for all q not equal to p and if we simplify this condition we get p minus q okay multiplied by p b minus c divided by 2 plus 1 minus p into b okay minus 1 minus p multiplied by b by 2 if we simplify this we get this and this should be greater than 0 for all q not equal to p okay so if we analyze this then for this to be greater than 0 okay so this is the condition that we got that for all q not equal to p this condition this left hand side should be positive okay so pay attention suppose this expression under in inside the bracket is positive okay then if this is negative say p is less than q then this thing p minus q becomes negative so then this condition is not hold 
Similarly, when this is negative, then it, it is also not true. So, we can say that this condition is this is not true or does not hold for all q not equal to p. Again pay attention. So, we have to check whether this condition uh, let us see this is equation number 5, equation number 5 is true or not okay, for our game. So, uh, and is true for all q not equal to p. So, to analyze this let us suppose that the equation in square brackets the expression in square bracket this thing this whole thing is positive. So, when this is positive and then when q is more than p then this thing this thing becomes negative. So, positive multiplied by negative. So, this whole thing becomes negative which is not greater than 0. So, this is how we can prove that this condition is not true or does not hold for all q not equal to p. What does that mean? This means that p is not an ESS, we do not have any such value of p okay? or we can say in better term that this was the condition for what a strong ESS. So, we do not have any strong ESS in this game. Okay? How about mild ESS? How about mild ESS? So, for mild ESS if you remember if you see this is the condition first thing is that f p p should be equal to f q comma p and then if it is true then this condition should hold. Okay? So, what I will do we will see. So, that condition instead of this the condition is f p comma p should be equal to f q comma p. If we simplify this we have already done that so, instead of this greater than sign the condition becomes p minus q sorry p minus q p v minus c divided by 2 plus 1 minus p into v minus 1 minus p into v by 2 instead of this greater than 0 this should be equal to 0 if this is the condition instead of this. Okay? As and this should be true for all q not equal to p. As q is not equal to p, then this term cannot be 0, this bracket. The only thing can be 0 is this. So, if we simplify this p v minus c divided by 2 plus 1 minus p v minus 1 minus p into v by 2, if this is 0. And then if we simplify this we get p equal to v y c. So, this is how we get this value of p one probability that is our candidate for candidate for ESS. Why I am saying candidate for ESS? Because this is just half part. So, if you see the condition for mild ESS, this should be true, then this should also, also be true. So, f p q should be greater than f q q. So, other condition is f p comma q should be greater than f q comma q for all q not equal to p. Okay? This is the remaining condition. Okay? So, we should check whether it is followed or not. So, if we do that and if we write the second condition or the remaining condition f p comma q should be greater than f q comma q okay, 
for all q not equal to p this is the condition and if you again put as we have already done this this is why we wrote this general expression for any fitness equation for any general p prime and p double prime so accordingly we will put the value of p prime and p double prime and we can write expression for these two terms this and this okay and for our this game hawk and dove so we can write this simply p multiplied by q multiplied by b minus c divided by 2 okay plus p 1 minus q into v plus 1 minus p into q into 0 plus 1 minus p 1 minus q into v by 2 this is the left hand side and this should be greater than right hand side also we can write q square multiplied by b minus c divided by 2 plus q 1 minus q into v plus 1 minus q into q into 0 plus 1 minus q square into v by 2 and this should be true for all q not equal to p. So, do not get confused just pay attention that uh, maybe you are confused how I am writing these, these terms. So, basically I am just going back to this expression I wrote. So, this I wrote for fitness value for any general p prime and p double prime. So, I can change it to p prime, I can take it p, q or whatever. So, you can write, you just replace here, okay, accordingly and you can write expression like this. This, this all we have been doing here also, everywhere, okay, here also, fine. So, let us simplify this. So, if we simplify this, then this is b upon c minus q multiplied by q multiplied by b minus c divided by 2 plus 1 minus q multiplied by v minus 1 minus q multiplied by v by 2 and this should be greater than 0 for all q not equal to p ok. So, this this thing can cannot be equal to both of these things cannot be equal. So, our candidate remaining is this ok. So, we pay attention we can write this expression as I am writing this pay attention half of b upon c this thing can be written as half of b minus b upon c minus q2 whole square ok. If, if we simplify this, so this condition should be true for all q not equal to p ok and if we further simplify it and pay attention we can write this expression as this and this is always positive for all q not equal to b upon c. So, what we have done? We have converted the left hand side into a perfect square ok. So, this left hand side is a perfect square of b upon c minus q to whole square ok. So, we have converted this left hand side to a perfect square and we know that this thing is always positive irrespective of value of q ok or the sign of this whatever is there inside the bracket. So, this thing is positive for all q not equal to b upon c. So, we can see that this condition is satisfied. What does that mean? This means that p equal to b by c 
is a mild ESS in Hawk Dove game that we were studying. Okay, so we have achieved our goal. Our goal was to find out the ESS in Hawk and Dove game, and it is turned out that P equal to BYC is the mild ESS in Hawk and Dove game. Okay. So, the conclusion is that neither pure strategy of Hawk is an ESS nor pure strategy Dove is, is an ESS. Similarly, we found out that there was no strong ESS in this game. Okay? Only one mild ESS is there and that is P equal to BYC. What is the interpre interpretation of this? Interpretation goes like this that if this population or all the members of this population choose Hawk with probability P equal to B by C okay. or in other words uses Hawk in P equal to B by C fraction of its and encounters okay then this population then this population is immune to any invasion by mutants okay so this is how we have completed the analysis that we uh, taken up to find out ess in the game called hawk and dove game with the mean with this with the help of this game we understood how to calculate the ess okay so now we know that this game has one mild ess that is called uh, that is p equal to b by c so if every member of this population of these stack deers, if they use Hawk strategy with probability B by C or B by C fractions of its these encounters they have, then this population is immune to all invasions from the mutant. Okay, so this is how we have calculated it. So we are done with now this definition of ESS and how do we calculate ESS? Okay, so in the next lecture. What we will do, we will have a look of about, you know, uh, look at different properties of ESS. Okay, how it is related to Nash equilibrium. Okay, and then we will do we will do some other modifications in ESS. So uh, we'll close here uh, this lecture. Thank you very much. Hello, good morning everybody. I am uh, Raghunandan Sengupta. So, I will just give you uh, the a very brief uh, excitement area of finance which is quantitative finance and that has a huge market starting around about 10 years back and it is exploding exponentially. So, what uh, do we mean by quantitative finance? Quantitative finance is actually the application of different mathematical and statistical techniques in the area of financial markets, be it say for example, derivative pricing, be it in the area of say for example, portfolio management, be it in the area of asset liability management, be it in the area of portfolio management, we see that the application has exploded in such a way that there is a huge opportunity for people who have a quantitative background in mathematics and statistics, they can utilize those in the area of finance, but obviously with some prior knowledge of, of, of uh, finance as a subject. 
Now, when we say about quantitative finance, as I said, it is an area of applied mathematics and statistics applied in, in financial markets. Use of different areas, if somebody is interested to know, we have stochastic calculus, we have derivative pricing, we have operation research, we have quantitative techniques like differential uh, equations, stochastic calculus, time series, and they are heavily used in the area of quantitative finance as I mentioned. Now, we all know that in 2000, in 1997, the Nobel Prize in Economics, so it is basically the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economics was given to the work of Merton and Scholz in the area of derivative pricing. And after that, there has been exponential increase in the area of, of quantitative techniques in, in, in quantitative finance and the, in the area of, of different type of derivative pricing. With the advent, moreover with the advent of, of high-ended and sophisticated computing data, big data has come in a very big way where application areas starting from computing from different type of algorithm design have been taken up in such a big way that nowadays at least we are able to understand that how high frequency data algorithm trading can be utilized using the concept of quantitative finance in the area of, of finance as such. But there is a flip side also, obviously when, when, when there is a huge amount of development, so obviously due to some regulation errors or something, there has been some, some pitfalls, which I think is should be a bullet point for people who are in, really interested to take up quantity finance, they should be aware. So consider the financial crisis in 2008 and later on and we are seeing different banks are failing, different financial institutions are facing a problem. Countries are facing a problem like in Europe, in, 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 in USA. So what should be done? So the main thing is that even if you know the technique is best for people who are investors, who are private players, organizations like banks, governments should use these techniques in a very somber manner such that the application areas of quantitative finance using the techniques which we learned can be utilized in the best possible way to garner the overall, the in-depth knowledge a person has in trying to utilize these quantitative techniques in finance. And I am sure that people who have the background, who have the knowledge, who have the, the sophistication, who have the, the knowledge of the society can definitely use quantitative finance in a very big way in trying to make their mark in this in years to come. And I am sure it will be a very exciting learning tool for all the participants who, who will take quantity finance as a, as, a, as a subject in years to come. Thank you and I, am, and I wish all the participants all the best and best of luck for the programs they will take. Thank you.